Okay, well, another question, we'll start with you, Heidi. When it comes to best educational practices, what are the respective roles of the board and of teachers in improving PAUSD education? So, this is a great question. Um, there are many ways with which teachers can share best practices in a community. And one of the ways in which I was told that teachers had shared best practices was by meeting at uh, grade level committees across the school district to discuss with other teachers from different schools what they were doing on certain topics. Um, teachers would get together across the third grade, for example, and share best practices and talk about how they were teaching different things in math or in science or in English. Um, these were unfortunately cut with uh, budget cuts. And I think it's a real shame because this is the way in which professional growth happens when uh, teachers can work together, can collaborate, can share ideas and talk about what's working and what isn't working. We also have teachers on special assignment in our district, TOSAs, who can go to schools and do sample lessons. These are sort of master teachers who can share best practices across schools. I think we need more TOSA time um, so that teachers can, again, benefit from ongoing professional development. It's not someone who comes in and teaches a class here or there about what's great in education, but it's an ongoing support person who's in the district who can come and, and work with the smaller learning communities at each campus. Camille? I didn't catch the question. Oh, oh sorry. When it comes to best educational practices, what are the respective roles of the board and of teachers in improving PAUSD education? Well, I think the, when it comes to classroom, actually learning classroom practices, I think that's best done through teachers. And I do think it's through the teacher advisor system, it's through their uh, instructional supervisors, it's colleague to colleague sharing practices. Um, the, the board's role in setting policy doesn't really set, um, it sets, it, we do vote on textbooks, we, we um, vote on, um, I'm trying to think of ways that we roll out our curriculum. Once we adopt a textbook or we adopt a curriculum, it really is up to staff and teachers to carry it out. It is not for the board and then at the end we survey it. That's what we see as our, the professional role of our teachers and probably one of the reasons that they're effective and um, like to work in our district. Ken. So the, the role of the board is to provide resources and to set expectations. And in terms of, um, in terms of teachers, I think the role of the board is to make sure that we continue to invest in teachers so that they um, continue to provide excellent education to our kids and also that we ensure that the district is enabled to use data and other methods for example classroom visits to identify those areas where our teachers need support and to provide them the professional development that they need I mean this is actually an area where we have the great virtue of having Stanford University across the street one of the great centers of development of educational best practices and I think one of the things that we should and could do is to build a much stronger bridge to Stanford. In terms of expectations, I think that um, a, a key role of the board is to set the expectation that all of our students will get comparable services from our district. And so for example, we have a connections program at JLS that is not available to our students at Jordan and um, at Terman. We have a teacher advisory system that is not available to our students at Gunn. It's only available to our students at Pali. And I think in both of those cases, in other cases, what we need to do is to make sure as a board that we are enabling our district and I expecting that our district is going to deliver comparable services to all of our kids. Thanks. Okay, Heidi, you get the first question this no, time. No, no. Melissa gets to answer. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm doing this all the time to you, Melissa. You must Thank be my you. shield forgot. of invisibility. I Heidi the last time. <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, it's the board's role to set policy. That is, um, that is our legal responsibility. So we should be setting policy and it, um, making sure that administrative regulations are 
uh, made or created commensurate with that policy. The policy needs to have clear goals. There needs to be clear metrics around what we would like to have happen. Then the board needs to make sure that investments are made in a way that's commensurate with the goals. If there aren't investments, then we're going to have a problem. Those investments should be around curriculum, for the curriculum itself, for professional development, for extra help, things like TOSAs, and techno technology that might support in the teacher in the classroom so they can serve every kid effectively, every student effectively. Um, and then the board's responsibility is to review, to see how we did. And the board reviews um, implementations with board reports by looking at standardized test scores and by surveying our community and surveying our students and teachers. And we need to do all of those things in order to see how whatever curriculum it is that we've decided to roll out is in fact being used and whether it's successful or not. Um, when I asked the question of Camille e earlier about everyday math, that's something we have to do with that program. We really have to do this with everything we invest in.